Hey everybody, my name is Mike. I'm not for Coltrane. Welcome to your Coltrane Tuesdays for this, the, uh, the 16th day of April in the year 2024 of the Common Era. Hi, I'm actually starting on time for a change. Right now, as I see the clock, it is, it is 12.30 and I'm starting to talk and I think, I think the video and the audio are functioning. Uh, Here's hoping. Uh, so yes, we are we are continuing our, our theme uh, as requested. Of uh, A is for April, Asia, and Africa. We're going to be doing a song with that theme in just a moment. But in just uh, right after that, we're also going to play a round of the Not for Coltrane Stump the Band game. The way that works is people will give me a song request, and I'll have to respond to it and play a song in response to that request, regardless if if I know what uh, they requested. So someone might request a song that I do happen to know, which case I'll have to try to remember how to play it. Uh, someone might request a song that I kind of sort of know, like I've I've seen other people play it or I've, I've heard it before, uh, but I don't really know how to play it, in which case I'll have to try to figure out how to play it. Uh, perhaps someone will request a song that I do not know at all, or at least at bare, bare minimum I don't recognize the song uh, by, its, by its title, in which case I will have to make up a brand new song right here on the spot with the same name as the one that was requested, thereby technically satisfying the requirement. That is how we play the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band Game. So now is a great time to, uh, to, to get in your request for that. Thank you, Beth, for letting me know that, uh, and also Mark, for letting me know that the video and audio are functioning. Thank you, Mark, for, for joining us again. So today, I think that's, and Beth, you can let me know what you think of this tie with this shirt. This is the shirt that was clean, and I was trying to pick a tie that, that uh, uh, visually suggested some of the, the motifs of, uh, of the culture which is being celebrated in our lead-off song today. As you may have figured out from the, uh, from the title card, this song has something to do with King Tutankhamun of, uh, of ancient Egypt. I believe the, the 1300s uh, BCE? Yes, 1300s BCE. Uh, so, we're going to do a song... Oh, okay. And uh, Beth has already got a request in. That's excellent. All right, so, but we are going to start first with this particular song talking about Tutankhamun, the, uh, the, the pharaoh uh, whose tomb was discovered uh, last century and led to a whole lot. We'll talk about all of that in just a minute, but first we're going to do uh, this song, and I'm stalling a little bit because I'm, I'm very nervous about playing this song. You will note this is not unusual. Uh, but this is a song that's a bit of a stretch uh, stylistically, and it involves several chords that I learned just last night. So we're going to see how this goes. Fun, fun jazz chords. The song is called Dead Egyptian Blues, and it's by Michael Peter Smith. Uh, I've loved it since I first learned of the song's existence, uh, and, I've been, and so I've been looking for an, an opportunity to get myself to figure out how to play it. I believe I've come up with a reasonable approximation of how it's supposed to be uh, played, uh, whether or not I will be able to live up to that. We're going to find out. You will be the judge. But here we go. This is an attempt at Dead Egyptian Blues. cares for you. Egyptian nights were never colder, and all your friends are thousands of years older. What does it matter? What? Nope. All right, this song deserves better than that. I'm going to do it again. Here we go, Dead Egyptian Blues. Jewels and made you play. 
play the fool yesterday, yesterday. And now you keep in shape with Elmer's glue. He's all wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues. Oh, Mr. Tuck, they love the mask. Do they love it, honey or sweetheart? Don't ask. What's those baby browns that pearly smile? That smile that drove them wild down by the Nile. One terrific hieroglyphic, don't you bro? Centuries of standing sideways turned you to a pro. Those girls from Cairo who filled your heart with lust, they've all turned to dust. Yesterday, yesterday, those bandages don't do that much for you. You're all wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues. Oh, Mr. Tuck, they dig the tomb. All that gold leaf, it brightens up the room. What's the diff when you're stiff? What riff they're playing? When your ears have spent a couple thousand years decaying. What does it matter what possessions you may boast? When you're just a ghost, it's only jive. Clive, your sarcophagus is glowing. Your esophagus is showing Who cares how rich you are, love When you look like Boris Karloff They call Peloton They might even refund your dues They're all wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues Oh, Mr. Tut Wait and see Another couple thousand years are gonna dig up me Then I'll have all my little Treasures close at hand. Copy of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band. Little beat up notebook with some lyrics to a song. Letter from my honey saying, I Love you, kids, so long. Some peanut butter sandwiches that have long returned to sand. Not much gold and silver, but tut, I think you'll understand. Cause in my way, I'll be just like you. All wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues. All wrapped up. All wrapped up. All wrapped up. All wrapped up, All wrapped up in them dead Egyptian blues. Not terrible. That is a standard to which we aspire here on the Coltrane Tuesdays program. So I hope to uh, continue working on that one, maybe get a, a cleaner version of that online and uh, add it to the set list of things that I do periodically because I love that song. So let's talk about where the uh, where the song comes from and all of the don't envy anyone trying to play. <laughs> um, so uh, King Tut, King Tut uh, lived uh, from from what we understand of the historical record, from uh, let's see, 1341 to 1323 BCE, before the Common Era, he was originally named uh, Tutankhamun, uh, possibly the son or another very close relative of Akhenaten, who, if you know anything about ancient Egypt. And I don't know how many of you do. Uh, Akhenaten was kind of a big deal because he's like, you know, we're going to change all of the religion of Egypt. We're going to do this this new thing where everyone worships Aten instead of all this, this pantheon of gods. Um, and we're going to move the capital and we're going to do all these other things. And uh, it was kind of, kind of a big deal, but also pretty controversial. A lot of folks were like, yeah, I'm not so sure about this. Tutankhamun, under his rule, first off, he changed his name to Tutankhamun. Uh, bringing the, the name of the, the god Aten from, uh, from earlier, moved the capital back to Memphis, uh, was doing all these reforms to sort of bring back the old religion, probably. Uh, he became Pharaoh at age nine or thereabouts, uh, so chances are good there were some older advisors who were like, we're not so sure about this, this Aten stuff. We're going to, here, here, little guy, we're going to help you, and we're going we're gonna to bring things back the way they were. Um, he uh, died unexpectedly at age 18 and was buried in the tomb that was available, probably not the one that he had, they'd been planning for uh, him to use, uh, but it ended up being uh, sealed and very, very well preserved until it was 
rediscovered in 1922 by the uh, the guy's name was do 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 do. Um, <laughs> yes, he's known for the 1922 discovery of his tomb by a team led by British Egyptologist Egyptologist Howard Carter. Uh, and although it had the tomb had been disturbed anciently, it had been robbed, uh, not that much. And quite a bit of it was intact, including the sarcophagus and the, uh, the death mask and all the funerary mask and all those sorts of things. Uh, and everyone's like, this is amazing! Uh, you know, especially coming out uh, in, in an era when, you know, telegraphs could, could transmit stuff around the world. And shortly thereafter, you've got photographs um, and inspiring all of the popular culture stuff we have about Egypt today, anything about mummies, you know, all those, those sorts of things and the curse of the mummy, all of that basically comes out of the discovery of King Tut's tomb. Uh, not a big key part of that, the deaths of some individuals who were involved in the excavation have been popular, tri popularly attributed to, quote unquote, the curse of the pharaohs due to the similarity of the circumstances of their deaths. So all these, you know, you end up with, uh, with the mummy in, in movies, and curse the pharaohs and all those sorts of things like that, stemming out of the discovery, or the rediscovery, really, of King Tut's tomb. Quite a few decades later, uh, the, some of the, the artifacts from, uh, from the excavation were, were on a tour around the world, and uh, the wonderful songwriter Michael Peter Smith got a chance to see them and was very much inspired by them uh, in sort of the, uh, the, the meditation on death, and he came up with, uh, with this particular song. Uh, tremendously clever. Uh, I think the, the line that got me hooked immediately was, uh, now you keep in shape with Elmer's glue. Uh, the line that does it for a lot of people is uh, rhyming uh, sarcophagus with esophagus, which is not a rhyme you hear in a lot of songs. I learned of the song through uh, Ann Hills. Ann uh, collaborated and performed quite a bit with, with Michael Smith. Um, over, I think, a very long period of time. Uh, Michael Smith is unfortunately no longer with us, but uh, I got to see Anne do that song uh, a year or two ago, uh, and I was like, that is amazing. I absolutely need to learn more about that song. So thanks very much to Anne Hills, uh, who's been a great friend of Godfrey Daniels here in Bethlehem, PA, as well as just a tremendous songwriter and human being. Um, and that special thanks, of course, for introducing me to the works of Michael Peter Smith and the cool things that he does. Let's see, definitely set list worthy. One hand, one heart, okay, we're about to split a request. Great, cover, thank you very much for all of that. We've got, uh, so then we've got some requests coming in which I'm going to try to deal with. I did make some modifications to the lyrics. Now I understand Michael Smith also uh, would periodically make some modifications to those, uh, to those lyrics as well, periodically. Um, <laughs> one of the, the key things, and I was thinking about uh, how to do this, and this ties into our theme, of, uh, of where we're doing songs that relate to places in Asia and or Africa. Um, so Egyptian technically isn't a place, right? It's, it's an adjective that describes a place. And so I'm looking for a place in the song that, that it happens to be in Egypt. And it does mention the Nile, so we're, we're safe regardless. It mentions Cairo a couple of times. And after I'd listened to the song a bunch, I thought, hey, wait a minute, Cairo. Yeah, it turns out, Cairo didn't exist at the time of King Tut, uh, so it's a bit of an anachronism that, uh, that it's mentioned there in, in the lyrics. Uh, what I learned uh, last night when I was looking at things... Oh yes, Tut became something of a Batman villain in the old TV series. That is absolutely correct. Oh, and I think it was um, one of the, the famous actors of that era who, uh, who was the, uh, the King Tut in the Adam West 1966-ish, I think. Um, Batman TV series. Um, I believe original character created for the TV show that then later found its way, that, that character found its way into the comics as well. Um, right, Cairo. So it turns out, as I learned last night, so I mentioned uh, Tut was living in, uh, he died in 1323 BCE. Uh, Cairo itself was much later. Uh, I won't go through the whole history, but the, it started, uh, there was a Roman fortification there in uh, around 300 CE of the Common Era, so that's already quite a bit later. Um, and then, uh, subsequently, a contemporary of Muhammad uh, was uh, the one who led the, uh, the Muslim conquest of Egypt 
in the 1600s, if I remember correctly. Uh, and he took the Roman fort, which had at that point was a Byzantine fort, and then set up his own settlement there. And then much later after that, uh, another individual named it Cairo when it was becoming when it became the uh, the Fatimid Caliph, uh, or the capital of the Fatimid dynasty in uh, 1970. I'm sorry, in 973 or so. Therefore, it wasn't Cairo until about 2,000 some odd years after King Tut. However, Cairo is very close to a lot of locations that were important in ancient Egypt, including the city of Memphis. Memphis was where King Tut moved the capital back to after, uh, after his predecessor had moved it elsewhere. It was trying to change everything. So there is, there is sort of some, some it all does kind of come back together. Uh, I thought those girls from Memphis uh, doesn't have quite the same ring as those girls from Cairo. So we did keep the, uh, the anachronism in the lyrics there, but anyway. These are the sorts of things that I find fascinating. I don't know about you, but thanks so much for hanging out and checking out that. Oh yes, Victor Buono, yes, that is absolutely right, was the, uh, was the one who played King Tut. And uh, oh, another uh, connection to, uh, to Asia, as in fact, the, the style, of course, is, is kind of a jazz manouche. Uh, in, in the evoking somewhat of, of the Django Reinhardt uh, idea. Jazz Manouche, of course, based on this idea uh, or one of the, the musical traditions, some of the musical traditions from the Romani or Roma people who were originally from India and migrated through, uh, through Europe and uh, in, in left interesting and important aspects of their culture in various places. So. There you go. All sorts of things coming together in unexpected ways. So, we will now be getting the... He was the one with the nipple. <laughs> no, no. Adam West... Oh boy. Adam West was not the one with the nipples on the bat suit. Uh, Adam West did have a, a form-fitting leotard costume. So I guess when it was cold, maybe there were nipples on his bat suit. George Clooney was the one with the rubberized nipples on his bat suit. So we were getting we're getting ready to play a round of the Nafra Coltrane Stump the Band game, and here's how that works in case you missed the top of the show. People will give me a song request. They're already competing song requests in the chat right now. I'm going to take one or possibly both of them uh, and and have to perform them. So maybe they've requested a song that I do happen to know, in which case I'll try to remember how to play it. Uh, perhaps they will uh, request a song that I kind of know, like I've heard it on someone's playlist or I've seen it on someone do it at open mic a couple times which case I will try to remember how to play it. Uh, perhaps it will be a song that I do not recognize at all, in which case I will have to make up a brand new song right here on the spot with the same name as the song that was requested. <gasps> Thereby technically satisfying the requirement. That is how we play the Not For Coltrane Stump the Band Game. So while they, uh, while, while Mark and uh, Beth may uh, consult and figure out how we're going to prioritize the request for this week, two other things I did want to mention that are important. Uh, first off, thanks so much to everyone who was part of or who came out for the event this past Sunday at the Ice House. We had some people come out and join us. We are very, very grateful for that. We're raising some money for the Red Cross of the, uh, of, it's, it's the Pennsylvania Rivers chapter of the American Red Cross. Um, they, uh, that's based in Allentown. It serves the Lehigh Valley and a couple of our, our surrounding regions here. Um, they do lots of important work in the community, including showing up and helping out when people are forced out of their homes by fires or floods or other sorts of disasters. Um, and uh, having been on hand and seeing some of the, the scenes where they're showing up and helping people um, in my previous life as a reporter, it made a big impression. So I'm, I'm grateful for the work that uh, Red Cross does. Any contributions that go in the virtual tip jar this week will go will get added to what we raised on Sunday for that. So thanks to anyone who was able to, uh, to check out those links to the Venmo or the Cash App or the PayPal. So those contributions will go to uh, the Red Cross locally here in the Lehigh Valley. Also, we are very quickly coming up on the season finale. It will be the final Tuesday in April will be the season finale. After that, I'm, we're gonna see what happens. For one thing, it's going to be an opportunity to go back and actually put links and chapter breaks and all sorts of things like that in the uh, videos that have been going up over the past several months, which I have been uh, remiss in doing. So it's, those are going to start uh, getting fleshed out 
There may be some other things that happen as well, so stay tuned for that. If I can find some way to do some sort of a collective thing that still happens at 12.30 on Tuesdays, I will let you know. So watch for that. Uh, but regardless, the fin finale is coming up in just a couple weeks. The theme for the finale is going to be all requests that are about locations in the world that are outside the United States of America. Uh, it can, in, in fact, also be in Asia or Africa, but we're going to expand it beyond that. And I think Mark has been uh, revving up with some Australia-related requests, so we'll see how that goes. But we do have one more week that is just with our April theme, so check out that next week. And I think that's everything that was on my list to mention. All right, so let's see what we have here for the requests. Victor Buono played the professor, Adam West. Do, 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 do. Um, hmm. Let's see. Beth requested, I'd like to request My Own Worst Enemy by Lit, which I doubt you know, but which will be thorough, why we thoroughly mused with a song about improvise about, yes, that's fair. Um, I also, oh, hey, if anyone is watching on Facebook, also, by the way, hi, uh, Facebook turned the switch back on so things can actually happen there as well. So if people are able to give me a like or a comment or something on Facebook, so let me know you're there for that. I don't see anything just yet. Uh, so My Own Worst Enemy by Lit is a possibility. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Mark's request is uh, today's the birthday of Selena, the Teano singer. She sang A Boy, a boy Like That from West Side Story as part of a fundraiser for AIDS Los Angeles. Do I know any song from West Side Story, the musical? Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, I don't know anyone trying to, uh, I'm Vanny, I'm trying to play Bernstein by guitar. One hand, one heart would probably be the easiest. All right, so, um, I know none of those. I know, I do not know the song uh, by Lit. And I also, which is, I believe Beth said is called My Own Worst Enemy. And I don't really know any of the songs from West Side Story. I know, uh, I know uh, a little bit of Maria. Um, Maria, I just met a girl named Maria, and suddenly that name will never be the same, Maria. And that's the sum total of my knowledge of that song. Uh, I think there's another one where there's a lot of snapping and dancing by street toughs, and there's something about when you're a jet, you're a something, something, something. Um, that is, that is, that's all I know from, from West Side Story. Uh, if I'm even thinking of the correct musical, <laughs> I hope that I am. Uh, all right, so let's see if we can, let's see if we can combine these, uh, do sort of a, a show tunesy idea about uh, One Hand, One Heart, the other song was A Boy Like That, A Boy Like That and My Own Worst Enemy. A Boy Like That and My Own Worst Enemy in a, in a show tunesy, uh, vaguely, uh, yeah. Is it Bernstein? Yes, Bernstein. So it's probably, what would it need to have that sort of, uh, that sort of sound to it? <laughs> Boy like that. enemy. My own worst enemy, a boy like that. <laughs> My own worst enemy. I like the sound of that.
are learning how little I know about Bernstein. I think I have uh, some chords I'm, you know, they'll do. Um, a boy like that. Uh, Alright, so I think this is going to be, the, the song, the song is going to be titled something to the effect of, um, we're going to call the song uh, A Boy Like That, parentheses, my own worst enemy. And, um, and, and I need, need like a starting, uh, beginning, a beginning line, something about, uh, oh, what are we gonna do? Um, Okay, okay, I think I've got, I think I've got the basic idea, I've got a couple rhymes, we'll see if they stick in my head long enough to get to, uh, to get me going, and then we'll see if the inertia takes over. Alright, so the song is, A Boy Like That, parentheses, My Own Worst Enemy. Side out my door, here all alone in the city. I wish I could be something more. Down on the corner, I see a young man with a jaunty tilt to his cap. He looks so confident. Wish I could be a boy like that, but I'm my own. I stand in my way here before Stand in my way, how can I move ahead? How can I set my foot out the door? Takes off down the block with a spring in his step I do not see where he goes I could have that kind of confidence I wish I could be one who knows I wish I could say this is 
my town. I know all the ones who possess. I know all the things that I ought to be aware of. I know how to dress. But I'm my own worst enemy. I stand in my way all the time. I am my own worst enemy. I still don't On our west side, the sun goes down on this town. And still I'm thinking of that boy, where he was going around. But I'm my own worst enemy. I sit here the night all alone. And that boy goes on to find his own. Getting any better from there. So there you go. That is uh, a vaguely show tunes ish sort of attempt uh, at a song fusing together the both of the requested titles. Uh, that was, uh, I believe, My Own Worst Enemy by Lit, as well as uh, A Boy Like That from West Side Story. Um, I'm reasonably sure that what I just did there had virtually nothing to do with either one of those. But thanks very much to Mark and Beth for those requests. Sure, a dance break, whether you're a chat or a shark, exactly. A boy like that will give you sorrow. You'll meet another boy tomorrow, one of your own kind. A boy like that, like that, indeed. Missed the whole thing. That is okay, you didn't miss much. But thanks again to Beth and to Mark for those requests. Thanks uh, again to Ann Hills for uh, for playing or introduce, for at a concert introducing me to that delightful song by Michael Peter Smith called Dead Egyptian Blues. Uh, thanks to anyone who was able to, to chip in a little something to the the uh, virtual tip jars. So that will go to the Red Cross benefit. Oh, and yes, I should say specifically, thanks so much, very, very much, to uh, Leo Modelis and uh, Dana Gaynor, who joined me at, this, at the Ice House this past Sunday. Thanks also to the Ice House, everybody involved with the Ice House, for letting us do that show. Uh, we are continuing to uh, set aside some money for the local chapter of the American Red Cross. If you are able to contribute something to the tip jar this week, that is where that will go. But apart from that, uh, of course, thanks also to everyone who's able to, to watch, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay. Everyone who hits the like button and who shares this around and possibly subscribes or follows or whatever you do on the various platforms where we are. We have another week left of the A is for April Asia and Africa series coming next week. And then the big finale of this weird disjointed season of the Coltrane Tuesdays webcast coming up at the end of the month, so watch out for that. And until next time, my name is Mike, I'm not for Coltrane. Please take care of yourself, take care of each other. I will see you around.